As the devaluation of the dollar continues and world food supplies are threatened, not just by a growing population but a variety of factors, soft commodities such as food continue to rise dramatically in cost. Investments in precious metals are most often extremely speculative, and at the end of the day, gold and silver are substances that you really cannot eat. We all must eat to stay alive. In that light, we're introducing to this audience a possible investment opportunity involving a company that is focused on the exploration and development of potassium sulfate minerals, otherwise known as potash, used in fertilizer. That company is IC Potash. IC Potash trades on the TSX Venture Exchange as ICP.V and in the U.S. as ICP. TF. IC Potash's Ochoa project in Lea County, New Mexico, contains premium priced potash necessary for maintaining sensitive crops such as high starch potatoes, beans, nuts, fruits, including strawberries, citrus, mangoes, cherries, and peaches, etc. Join me now for a conversation with Sidney Himmel, President and CEO of IC Potash. As we begin the education process regarding this resource, with ever increasing demand and a significant project in the land of enchantment, New Mexico. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well respected Stiffel Nicholas recently put a buy recommendation out on IC Potash of about two twenty five per share, with a projection down the road of about five dollars. Your share price is currently near a dollar a share. Food concerns are less speculative than perhaps precious or base metals, as in the fact that the shortages are real for food, and we all absolutely need it to survive. There's a great deal of seemingly potential upside here for the shareholder. On a relative value, I think the markets right now are becoming increasingly aware of the increasing price of food, and that if there's any commodity at the top of the list where there's shortages, it's not necessarily copper or zinc or even oil, but it's food. As that knowledge base comes out, and as people start to determine the fact that we're going to be one of the three or four or five at most potash mines that's going to production, I think that increase in value of the stock you know, will be developed. And I think it'll be developed over the next few months and over the next couple of years. I think you'll see a turn in the knowledge base of the company. Public has become increasingly aware of what's happening in the food area. We've had quite a lot of news in terms of technical developments at the company. A major piece of news which will be coming out is the pre-feasibility report. When you're going to build a mine, first you do your pre-feasibility, where you look at the various options for engineering, and you key in on specific options, and that includes mining method, processing methods, logistics, and also the sources of water and how you get that water. That's the pre-feasibility. After that, you do the feasibility, which basically is for all intents and purposes the final engineering. Well, people are waiting for that final pre-feasibility study, which will be out independently prepared by about 30, 35 consultants. And I think when that comes out sometime in the middle of October, that should have quite a dramatic impact on our valuation as the analysts are going to have highly objective information. I'm familiar with Lea County, New Mexico, and as well as Potash, there are a plethora of oil and gas wells there. I understand that you do not have to drill as far down to access the Potash as you would with oil and gas in that area. The typical oil and gas well there is at least five to 6,000 feet. And the new wells are ten to 12,000 feet for gas. We're only at 1,300 feet. For a mine that shallow and compared to oil and gas, we're virtually at the surface. Now, I also should say that where we are in the southeast of Mexico, we're in one of the most industrial pro-business areas in the entire United States. As a matter of fact, the potash industry in North America, which in the early 20th century didn't have one, all potash came from Germany. But the North American potash industry, and I'm talking all of North America, Canada and the U.S., started in New Mexico in the 1930s. That's where the first potash potash mines were found, and they've been mining potash actually in the Eddy County, which is right next to Lee County, where we are, for 80, 90 years. So we're in an area where there's a trained labor force, there's roads, there's rail to move potash either domestically across the U.S. or to Houston for distribution by freighter around the world. We've got a Bureau of Land Management that understands potash. We have a community that has been pro-business going back a long time and certainly right to the present day. One of the advantages that you have over competitors is you're going to be mining in the semi-arid desert of southeastern New Mexico. Absolutely. The amazing thing is that we're going to mine this rock. It's called polyhalite, which is Greek for many salts. That rock's got three salts in it, and people are going to be surprised, most people, when I tell them what the salts are, because they probably don't think of them as salt. But you've got potassium sulfate. That's your sulfate of potash salt. You've got magnesium sulfate. That's also a fertilizer. It's got magnesium, which is required by plants, and sulfate. And finally, you've got calcium sulfate. And guess what? Calcium sulfate is gyprock. It's on walls all over the place. We'll be able to sell some of the calcium sulfate, but most of it will enter 
a tailings pond. So we mine the rock, we remove the potassium sulfate and the mag sulfate, and then we uh, end up having it dissolved in large amount of water. Now, how do you get a salt out of water? Well, you evaporate the water. To use energy, that's going to be real expensive. But we're going to use solar energy, and it's real simple solar energy. We put the water with those potassium sulfate and mag sulfate in a pond. The pond is about two and a half square miles. It's about six or seven feet high. Over the air, the water evaporates, and quite simply, out comes potassium sulfate and magnesium sulfate. That's why we're a low-cost operation. We don't pay for the solar energy. We've been speaking with Sidney Himmel, president and CEO of sponsor company IC Potash, trading in the U.S. under the symbol ICPTF. Just type in ICPTF. Their website is icpotash.com. Find them also on potashblog.com and on the homepage of our website, ellismartinreport.com. In the coming weeks, we'll be speaking with other IC Potash Company principals, as well as getting updates from Sidney Himmel. The food story is not going away, not as long as we continue to eat. IC Potash is poised as a potential solution to rising food prices and creating healthier crops. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellis Martin, and I'm a shareholder of IC Potash.